Good afternoon, guys. How's everyone doing on this Monday? It turned into a wet afternoon, but yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're in the best of health. I hope you're being lucky in life, and I hope you're in the best of wealth too, guys. Welcome to my channel, guys. Joey Barnett TV. This is my second upload of today, so um, it's going to be a follow on, follow on part two of the Paul Massey um, video, which I just done just now. Hope you enjoy my content, by the way, guys. All my content is hard hitting true life experiences of my past not nothing what i've read out of books or watch off tv it's all my own experiences guys so how i didn't um end that last video was um what how i see paul massey what i thought of him and uh, I, I know i'm going to get quite a few people asking me how i knew him and what he was all about and what he was like so yeah um i only knew paul when he landed in parkhurst um Around the 2000 era, maybe 2001, maybe 2002. Um, he was doing a lump of bird and I was doing a lump of bird. We were both on the same wing, you know. He was, he was a, a chap, to be honest with you. And um, I was a bit of a live wire, um, a bit of a big player in there, you know. Arm robber, you know, just come off the book. And we gelled, we, uh, we met up, we linked up and we become good friends. We started eating together, we started cooking together, we started going down the uh, gym training together, and we done everything together. Um, but, you know, I do remember Paul saying to me that he hated every minute of being in Parkhurst, and that was because of he was away from all of his family, where he come from, which was Manchester, and um, he wanted to get out of Parkhurst. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, he put himself on good order and discipline, uh, refused to bang up one night, but he did warn me and he did tell me at that tea time on association that he weren't going to bang up. He just had enough. He wanted to up camp and um, get transferred out of there. And that would be one way to get swagged or transferred out of there would be um, to refuse to get banged up of a night time. When they call lock up, you just stand outside your cell, run across the net or do something like that, climb up a little pipe or something and say, no, I'm not banging up. Um, they then swag you down to the segregation unit because they've got to, because of an, obviously an incident just happened. And, um, you know, you go in front of the governor the next morning, the governor will ask you why you've done it, and that's when you explain your case to the governor and tell him whatever reason why you've done it, um, which in Paul's case would be that he was hundreds of miles away from his family, he's, he's got kids, he gets, you know, he isn't getting no visits over there because it's such a long way and um, he wanted out of there that way. So, um, yeah, I actually got moved out of the, um, Parkhurst. A, a, a transfer come up and um, it was the bus to Swellside. They um, come to my door one afternoon and asked me if I wanted to go to Swellside. There's about five of us that went. So, yeah, I got um, sent to Swellside from Parkhurst and um, Paul was still down the block on good organ discipline for refusing to bang up. So I'm not too sure how long he stayed down there uh, before they, they uh, shipped him out. And I'm not too sure if they did ship him out even. But yeah, Paul was uh, one, of, one of your own, a really nice fella. Didn't come across as how the papers and social media portray him, you know, as that hard man, that whatever they, however they portray him. He didn't come across as that. Because don't forget, you know, nor did Reggie Cray, you know, nor did many big names because of when you go to jail, you've got to lose your ego. You've got to lose everything about you, what represents whatever you are out on the street, what got you put in prison in the first place. You've got to lose that or you're going to be fighting for the rest of your sentence. Because in jail, there's always someone, you know, Bigger, harder, what would take you out, you know. If I went to jail nowadays at the age of my age, you know, I'd probably get, get taken out by um, a 22-year-old just because of, like, my name. And it, it'd be um, them climbing up the pecking order, um, you know, climbing up the ladder one step further. So it was one of them ones. But, yeah, Paul was a nice guy, man. Um, to me, you know, he didn't have a malicious bone in his body. He really, really didn't. And... Um, I hope, um, Paul, if you're looking down at this video and watching this video from up in the clouds, mate, I hope I'm putting a smile on your face because I'll never forget you. I'll never forget that that 
infectious smile what he had and you know we used to have a lot of banter together we used to have laughs together and we you know we didn't stop laughing we was always taking the piss out of other inmates you know um pulling strokes on other people and bits and pieces like that but yeah um rest in peace paul and um to paul's family i hope um you know you can look at this video and it puts a smile on your face because of uh i was with paul for you know, a while in jail and uh, yeah, we had a right, right good crack. So guys, hope you enjoy my content. I'll be back at you in a bit with more, more hard hitting, juicy content and big names who I was in jail with back in the day.